To the rest of the news, we all just lived through the hottest march in the history of our nation. Across the country, more than 15,000 high temperature records were set, as you can see in this video showing exactly where and when the records were broken over the month, making it the hottest march ever recorded in the 117 years since the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association began keeping records. Climate change is no longer something to fear in the future. It's happening right now. We see it in strings of massive tornadoes that tear across the American Midwest. We see it in enormous wildfires burning up the East Coast. And we see it in freak hailstorms that drop bowling ball-sized chunks of ice on the ground. All of this is caused by the endless dumping of toxic greenhouse gases into the environment from burning fossil fuels. And we let the people, and, excuse me, and we the people need to kick the oil barons and their phony climate scientists out of the halls of government so that we can finally get to work addressing mankind's most serious problem today, a plant that is turning on us, a planet that is turning on us. But what we don't need to do is rely on nuclear power as an alternative to fossil fuels. That's a lesson that Fukushima taught us and continues to teach us. Kelp off the coast of California was found to contain levels of radioactive iodine stemming from last year's ongoing Fukushima nuclear crisis in Japan. A team of biologists at California State University, Long Beach, discovered the contaminated kelp, though claimed that the levels of radiation were too low to be harmful. Then again, no amount of radiation is good, but this study does prove that what happens environmentally on the other side of the world does drastically affect the United States. For more on the dangers of nuclear power as an alternative to fossil fuels and what's going on with all this stuff from Fukushima, I'm joined by Paul Gunter, director of the Reactor Oversight Project at Beyond Nuclear. Paul, welcome back to the program. Hey, thanks again, Tom. It's great for you to have you joining us. Uh, radioactive kelp, is this just the beginning for the United States? Well, uh, I think that what we're seeing is the evidence of the fallout that when we first came on your show uh, back in March of last year, this was, this was the harbinger that we were, the message that we were bringing, that the radioactivity coming off that plant would precipitate all across the northern hemisphere. And now, uh, a little more than a year into this accident, we're seeing this bioconcentration, this biomagnification that we were talking about a year ago. It's uh, not only appearing in the kelp now off the coast of uh, California, but uh, we've seen uh, recent studies by the um, uh, Woods Hole Oceanographic uh, Institute where uh, they're concerned that hundreds of miles off the coast of Japan, uh, we're uh, now showing evidence of bioaccumulation of radioactive cesium in um, sea bass, uh, it, it, some of the closer uh, schooling fish like smelt um, in lakes and ponds in Japan. The, uh, we're, we're seeing levels hundreds and thousands of times greater than what would naturally be there, naturally meaning that this is from, would be from bomb tests and Chernobyl. So, we're seeing th this incremental increase from all these other accidents that have occurred over the past decades, now being compounded, now being added as additional body burden of radioactive toxicity in our environment. That's amazing. Uh, by bioaccumulation, um, the water has levels that are tens or hundreds or thousands of times more concentrated. It gets absorbed by the, the, the kelp or the, the animal life that massively concentrates it, so it becomes tens of thousands of times. Then that gets eaten by the fish, the small fish. They get eaten by the large fish. And by the time it gets to something as big as a 700-pound tuna, what do we have? We have a, a situation that can present itself as a health threat uh, sometime down the road. I mean, any uh, exposure at this point raises your risk. But again, what we have to realize is that uh, the Fukushima, the Ichi accident, is now adding on to a history of radioactive accidents, deliberate testing of nuclear weapons, and, and this is increasing the body burden of all life. Well, um, how is this going to affect Americans living on the West Coast? And, how, and, and, and also, how is it affecting 
Japanese and uh, you know outside of the Fukushima area, but like in Tokyo. Right. Well, uh, again, the radioactive fallout that came from the Fukushima accident—it's now turning up in bamboo shoots, uh, milk, uh, beef. Uh, so it's both terrestrial contamination and marine-borne contamination, and uh, you know we are bioaccumulators as well. Right. So we're at the, top of the food chain. We're at the very top of the food chain, and I think that the big concern right now is that all of the radiation standards are not taking into account the most vulnerable, vulnerable of our population, namely children and lactating mothers, but instead. Uh, you know, the standards continue to be antiquated because they're based on the r most robust in our population, you know, a 25-year-old male worker in a nuclear power plant. Right. So, well, not good. Um, Paul, thanks so much for hey, being with Hey, thank us. you again, Tom. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thanks for showing up.